Okay, so hello everyone. So I am delighted to be joined today by Jane Angel, who is uh, working behind the scenes for the People's Health Alliance and the Pe People's Food and Farming Alliance, uh, working with the social media aspect of things and also assisting Catherine McBean, one of the co-founders of the PHA and PFFA. Um, Jane, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. And the the kind of the the premise behind these interviews is I want to interview people that are famous and well known within the truth and freedom movement, but also those people that are busy doing amazing things, you know, kind of behind the scenes that we don't normally hear about. And I just feel that, you know, the, this idea of you know we're all in this together and there's no hierarchy we're all there creating this better world together um so i guess my first question for you is a little bit of background about maybe where you're from but also i think what's quite inspiring is when for you was this awakening or this realization that things are not the way that we've been told growing up okay so um i was born in um Isleworth, um quite a long time ago, <laughs> I won't tell you how long ago, and I live in Sunbury, um, just North Surrey, um, and uh, I'm a mum, wife, daughter, carer as well, I look after my mum, she's got uh, a lot of health issues, so uh, we moved back to the house about eight years ago, so I look after her too, um, and I just, I met Catherine through Twitter actually, um, and she was looking for social media help um, for the Awareness Foundation. And I thought being a, a stay-at-home mum, because my daughter was very young at the time, I thought it's something I can do, something I can get involved in. So uh, we got to know each other that way. Um, and then we kind of left that. And then Catherine had this amazing idea with another couple of founders to create People's Health Alliance. And uh, I kind of followed along and here I am. So. And it's skyrocketed from there. Yes, 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 it's, yeah, it has, it really has. Before yeah. we go into the People's Health Alliance and now the People's Food and Farming Alliance, mm. when, when for you was, or, or what would you describe as your awakening? I mean, was it, was it COVID that, that kind of woke, that, that kind of shook things up for you or was it earlier than that or? Um, I always tell people I had whisperings, so when I found out about the, the dietary guidance that they changed in the mid seventies, and I read like books by Robert, that's it, Dr. Atkins, Zoe Harcum, all about the food and nutrition, where they changed it in the seventies to be low fat, low fat, don't eat anything apart from low fat. And just reading these books, and that was a bit of a kind of an eye opener, but I obviously didn't put everything together until um, COVID appeared, but as I say whisperings and with my mum's, um mental health over the years um you know meeting a practitioner who um did bioresonance um and learning about i don't know if you've heard of um patrick holford he's very into orthomolecular medicine so basically the body being um low in minerals and vitamins can cause a lot of health issues reading his books um reading about um uh, Professor Abraham Hoffer, who was a pioneer in treating um, mentally ill patients, um, especially schizophrenia, with B3, the injector. It doesn't sound very ethical, but he, in the 50s, he injected um, patients with schizophrenia with um, B3, catatonic schizophrenia, and they almost made full recoveries. And this was like, this was like, wow, because my mum's had schizophrenia for a long time and it's always been big pharma medication you know maybe not so good as she could be you know lots of side effects and if you read up about antipsychotic medication it's quite horrifying um so just whispering to me um and then covid came along i mean I, I won't deny it i was kind of taken in for a few months like everybody else was the the, the psychological warfare was pretty heavy and um, I think it was uh, Peter Hitchens, um, he tweeted about um, a document from the government saying 
you know, those who aren't feeling the fear, you know, we need to ramp up the fear. We need to feel those people need to be threatened. And I was like, hang on a minute, we've got a pandemic. Why are we frightening the life out of people? Why are we doing that? You know, and then it just, the penny dropped for me. It, it dropped from a great height and hit me quite hard on the head. And it was just like, that was it, I think. And, and here I am. And someone said, there's a rabbit hole over there. Would you like to go down it, Jane? And off I went. <laughs> so, and that's my story, I think. And then did you go down that rabbit hole by kind of looking into how everything's connected and things like that or was the, or did that kind of almost immediately lead to you meeting uh, Catherine on Twitter I got back into Twitter on in late 2020 and and you know there's a lot of people saying pretty much the same thing about masks and jabs and things um and I didn't meet I, I knew of her account I, I remember thinking it was one of the interesting ones I wanted to follow so I did and then I think it was about May 2021 that she was asking for people to help with um, social media. Um, and that's when we got in touch. Um, yeah, I mean, up until then, it was quite lonely because you think you're mad because there's everyone around you just kind of going with the narrative and not kind of questioning. I had friends who just kind of, you know, would say to me, oh, I'm going to get that because I want my freedom back. And you're like, but your freedom is your freedom. You know, you shouldn't have to kind of, barter for it and they just it, it, I felt I was going a bit mad I, I found um stand in the park in May 2021 I think that kind of um reassured me a bit more and obviously then around the same time it was Catherine too so yeah 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 one of my best friends uh, said to me as well you know take take the jab and get your freedom back yeah. and I thought no that's giving your freedom away <laughs> because <laughs> you're doing it not because you want to but because you want to be allowed to do stuff yeah 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 um, I remember, yeah i remember conversation with my friend she came round to drop a, a present off for my daughter and it was in i think it's february 2021 and i was so starved of interaction with people i almost cried when i saw her and then as she walked away i said are you going to be getting the jab and she goes and that's what she said she goes well i want my freedom back so yes and it was just like it's like a parallel universe, I think, to to me. That's how I see it. It's just kind of there's one side of people and it's just, I don't know. Just, yeah, I, I still struggle to get my head around it. So you mentioned that it was it was initially quite lonely when the penny dropped. And, mm. you know, and I think whenever that really happens, it's a really um, dramatic experience for everybody. Suddenly, yes, like the cognitive dissonance, suddenly your reality is something completely different than what you thought it was before. Mm. Um, and then obviously the, the, the People's Health uh, um, Alliance and the Food and Farming Alliance is about actual physical on the ground, meeting up, getting yeah. together. Yeah. Um, so maybe just uh, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit now about where, you know where are we now with the with the PHA with the the PFFA? I know that Catherine recently was on GB News, but kind of what's going on there now with the physical, actual physical reality of getting things mm. out there on the ground? We've got about twenty five health hubs in the UK, which we're absolutely thrilled with. We've got health hubs in Canada, New Zealand, Portugal. We have literally gone international. I think Catherine was on um, Pam Gregory, you know the astrologer. And from that interview, it just kind of went, just again, skyrocketed. So we've, we've got a lot of hubs out there. We're partners and affiliates that we're linking up with. Um, they're promoting us, we're promoting them. Um, they're ambassadors, uh, we're very proud of. It's just, it's just keeping the momentum going. As you, I think you, as you said earlier, people are tired, people are worn out. And when you're tired and worn out, you just, you've got, not got the enthusiasm. It's keeping the momentum going getting people enthusiastic and, and wanting to help. But as I say, it's just trying to get past that, that weariness, I think, that everyone's feeling at the moment and it's setting in, you know? Yeah, and I feel that it goes, it goes in ebbs and flows, yeah. you know? You feel that your energy is just totally drained. Yeah. And then yeah. something happens and then that just re-energizes yeah. and it. brings yeah. it back. Yeah. Now would be also maybe a good time to mention that you are looking for people that would be interested in helping out with the social media side of things, right? Definitely. Um, 
looking for people with experience on Instagram, Getter, uh, Twitter, Facebook. We need the help. Um, you know, we've obviously, our social media is a big part of who we are. We have quite a, a reasonable presence, I'd say, on um, all of those platforms, but we just need to keep the momentum going. I mean, it's all about health. And for me as well, the mental health side of it is, is keeping people hopeful and just just kind of getting people to, you know, everything will be okay, to believe that everyone everything will be okay. Well, then that's perfect for the CPM community because that's also the focus there is, mm. you know, is that, um, yeah. you know, the, 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 the old needs to collapse for there to be something new to be born. And so the, as, ho- as, as horrible as that collapse can be, it's a necessary part of there being uh, enough people to realize that we need something better. So yeah, it's about focusing, I would say, focusing on what we want, focusing on where we want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the next steps for um, PHA and the PFFA? It's more and more hubs, they're so, they're so needed. You know, you, we, we, we can see every day how the NHS is going, it, you know, going downhill obviously the idea of the people's health alliance is bringing the power back to the people and asking people to take responsibility for their own health rather than kind of being dependent on pills and you know goodness knows whatever i understand obviously people have to take certain medications i understand that but it's just you know taking that power back and but you know and looking after your own health you know and obviously where pffa comes in you know growing your own vegetables your own fruit and and being you know being empowering people basically and connecting with the pffa also it's about connecting the the people directly with the farmers as well right so you can go straight to the producer exactly exactly that so talking about um bringing health back to ourselves so that we've got the path you know so that we we might need to take medication but that we we can feel that you know we're in charge of our own health Hmm. um Obviously, there's a lot of people out there for different reasons struggling. Um, some have lost jobs, others have been injured, and there's all sorts of different things going on. What would be your advice, tip for those people that are in that space right now where they're just feeling like they don't have any power, when they're feeling kind of powerless or, the, or that this is hopeless? come and join the PHA or the PFFA I think everybody can do something what's, what's the saying um nobody can do everything but everybody can do something because we get a lot of people with the PHA especially um they think because they're not a practitioner that they can't do anything well can you hold a paintbrush yes can you hold a pen yes can you organize a meeting yes you know can you you know speak to suppliers or what have you yes everyone can do something and I think once you, you know, when people feel needed, that's when they feel empowered. It's just, it's it's getting involved. It's reaching out and getting involved in local community initiatives like this. You know, know, I'm involved in the Svelthorn and Runnymede and we've got a hub there, but it's just, it's reaching out. As I said before, people felt very isolated. So, you know, just reach out and you'll probably be very surprised at what you find you know there's a, there's a good bunch of people out there I think everyone thinks at the moment we're just fully in darkness at the moment yes sometimes it does look very dark but there are good people out there and you know they, they will be found you can find them so. yeah and what you were saying before as well you know it's so different when you actually meet people physically face to face Lovely. and actually start communicating and talking to people yeah. that yeah. you know come that, that understand what you're talking about yeah. when you're talking oh. about these things yeah if I remember when I met the um the stand in the park guys it was just like you kind of like you just constantly you know it's just wow you understand where I'm coming from and that's beautiful it's when you've kind of been stuck at home you know in lockdowns and stuff and all everyone around you seems oh, I mean they might think I was mad but everyone around you seems to be going slightly mad and then you meet a, a group of like-minded people it's just it's beautiful it really is it's just such a relief you know what I um, was saying about you know this 
bringing the power back to, to your, your, your health and your strength and your truth. I don't know, just bringing all that power back. In my sessions, my hypnosis sessions, I talk about, you know, like bring that lion, your, your power, your strength, your truth, bring that animal into what, you know, into whatever you're experiencing right now, which can be anything, but often it's a lion, um, is when, when, we, when we make a bit of a shift, then we notice the difference, then we feel the difference. Like if you said, if you were feeling isolated and then you met people in, the, in, a, in a stand in the park and then you notice that difference, then you realize where you were before but at the time that you you know to 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 take that face the fear and do it anyway and to take that step um we can maybe feel that it won't make much of a difference this is just the way that it is but then when you make that change you feel that transition inside and it feels better is that obviously i guess how you felt when you were feeling isolated and then yeah yeah no exactly just from the isolation I think you really appreciate contact with people having been so isolated and then suddenly it's just like everyone's there and you know I went to a couple of protests and stuff and I don't know if you've ever been to um any other protests but they are just it's like you're you're recharged you kind of you you, you know you, you look at your phone it's on red you know the battery's on red and then you're kind of you're like that and then you go to like protest or or you know you're a meetup or something and then suddenly just woof you're kind of recharged and you can carry on you know it's 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 a funny existence it's kind of like my friend accurately described it. it's kind of like you go for through a grief because things aren't how that you you thought they were you're kind of like hang on a minute I'm I mean I'm 45 it's just like all all my life as I said to you earlier apart from like whisperings and things you're like just it's so much to get your head around and I think that's why people run away from it they're like oh no 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 no! I want to believe this is how it is you know so it, it, it's plain as day that it's not how I think it is but I don't want to know you know it's kind of yeah it's, it's difficult it's not easy I think I'd rather be here in this position now than kind of just opening my eyes again because that's the that's a very strange phase to go through you know very strange and I think that's an important message as well is because we go through these phases. So, you know, I, I talk about the initial phase is kind of, you know, you realize that um, that things are not the way that you thought they were. Um, and that's that kind of cognitive dissonance. My whole truth has just collapsed. Reality is, has, is not what I thought it was. And then we can go into this kind of state of, of, of despair, almost doom and gloom that, that there's because we go down the rabbit holes, we want to learn more. So we start exploring all the different topics and then we realize how everything's interconnected. And then we just think, well, then we've got no chance. And then the next stage after that is to, uh, is this part that we're talking about now really, which is to actually get out there and meet people and do something that brings that meaning back. So we've got that sense of meaning or, you know, other people talk about purpose, um in our lives again and also that positive focus where we're surrounded by people attempting to do something to change this situation mm -hmm. so it's i think what we're talking about here is that third stage really is like okay we've realized that it's all interconnected mm -hmm. we've realized that you know that this has been going on for a really long time and then and then now what you know, like, are, are we going to stay focused on how bad everything is and, and doom scrolling, as they call it now? Or are we going to find out, um, you know, how we can do something to give that meaning back in our lives? Mm -hmm. And I guess the only the only solution to that is just to just to pluck up the courage to go to one of those meetings. Mm -hmm. It's probably just a facing the fear moment where we just have to go and do it it's not it's not easy i mean going out of your comfort zone is incredibly difficult um i find it very difficult and obviously i know a lot of people do but you just have to bite the bullet and you know just think about what's on the other side it's just i think sometimes it's the apprehension of, of meeting people but as i said before you'll be hopefully genuinely positively surprised at what you do find. so if people are ready to take that step hmm. and you know we've just given maybe they already had the motivation or perhaps we've just motivated some people a little bit and they want to take that step uh, from the work that you're doing 
and also the partners that you have, mm. where would you recommend that people go if they're feeling like, yeah, I'd love to, but there's nothing going on where I am? OK, well, you can go to the PHA website. Um, there's obviously our list of um, information. There's um, Hub Life. So that will give you a list of all the hubs. You can find the hub that's local to you. Um, we have Telegram groups for every hub. So you can join that. Um, or you can get in touch with us. You, know, you can contact us through Facebook, Telegram, what have you. Um, you can volunteer to help us at the core PHA, should I say. So it's kind of like running the social media, um, admin, anything, IT. You know, it's just, it's just reaching out and you can volunteer or, yeah. And um, what about other partners? So there's the stand, stand in the Park, obviously, is another big one. I think they're yeah. global as well, aren't they? Yes, they are. I think it's Australia they started, didn't they? I think, yeah. Um, so we've got um, Stand in the Park, we've got Mentel, we've got When Push Comes to Shove, um, but we've got a lot of collaborations um, coming on, so, yeah. And they're all also, they've, they've got, phys uh, you know, like actual physical meetups where you can go and meet people in person. When Push Comes to Shove is like a like a maternity services type thing. Um, Mentel is mental health for men. It's kind of like getting men to talk, as we know often they don't um stand the part is more the social kind of um aspect great and also um if people are still going through you know maybe if if, if there isn't anything where they are i mean that's possible mm -hmm. for example that you know the, the the pha hubs in australia they're just starting out in portugal just starting out mm -hmm. um, there's so much going on online as well with yes. support on our channel at CPN, but also on your channel. And also, I mean, you're on all the social media as well. So it's all available there. What was the name of that lady that does the, uh, the? I think it's like a drop-in session once, pretty oh, much Helen, once every Helen day. Gibson. Yes, Helen Gibson. Yeah, she does those the drop-ins every day. I think there's at least one every weekday. I think they, they've added a few more to that as well. So that's been, that's been running for a good 18 months actually i think so maybe just quickly tell us about the uh the well-being wednesdays that you run at the P uh, pha okay so they're um every wednesday from half seven to half eight um topics uh, vary from week to week you know we have anything from fitness to ayurveda to mental health so yeah they run for an hour they're good to, to get in and they're available on Rumble and yeah, Rumble. We have a Rumble channel, so you can see those if you can't make the, the half eight, the half seven to half eight in the morning. Yeah, so I think they're run on Zoom, right? If you want to join them yourself, you can on Zoom. Um, and then otherwise they're afterwards they're all uploaded so that you can watch them afterwards. That's it, yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, is there anything else that you would like to say to people who are watching this and um, going through any of those different phases of either kind of feeling maybe they've just woken up to what's going on? Maybe they're now in this isolated phase or maybe they're looking for direction and where to go next. Yeah, I think it's just good to find people to talk about it. There's, there's so much out there. I mean, there's obviously us, there's yourself, and there's, there's so much out there to support people. Um, take every day as it comes, because it's it really can be overwhelming sometimes to just kind of, it's mind blowing. I can't describe it. It's, and as I said earlier, sometimes there's a like a grief you go through, but keep in touch with people, keep talking to people, tell people how you feel. You know, I know it's not always easy because it might be just you that's kind of woken up and you've got a whole family of kind of people who've still got their head in the sand but there are people out there there's us you know there's you've got the mental health support that we offer but you know also yourself doing that keep in touch with people talk to people i know it's i know it's hard i know it's, it's very difficult it's uh sometimes i describe these times as biblical because i don't know what else to, to call them because it's just like so yeah it's, it's, Every day as it comes, because sometimes you, I remember when I was kind of in my early kind of time of the awakening, as you call it, and it was just some of the stuff that you read, it just, just blows your mind. And it's just, yeah, it's, yeah, I, it's, even now I, have, I struggle to put into words, you know, what you, you know, what you've been through and the realisation. But, um, you know, we're here, there's a lots of us, you know, there's lots of us all over the country, all over the world reach out to us and we you know I don't mind having a chat with somebody if I want to you know it's I know what it's like 
first. Just, it's catching, but it's like Catherine said, you, you catch people, you know, kind of it's realization happens and you just got to catch people and kind of tell them it's going to be okay. You know, it will be okay, but it's just kind of that. So I, I keep going back to grief, but as you know, with grief, you can't go around it, you can't go over it, you can't go under it, you have to go through it and you have to kind of you have to kind of make sense of it, I think. That's what you have to do. You have to just take every day as it comes, try and make sense of it, but reach out. There's plenty of people around who, you know, who are happy to chat and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, that was a nice, beautiful little piece there, really. Um, also, one thing which I'm thinking as you're saying that now is, I'm not saying that it's not important to share the information, share what you found out. Um, you know, we w other people will only be able to go through this awakening or wake up process when they've received the information. So you have to get that information from somewhere. But one thing that I'm kind of hearing as well, which I also resonate and agree with, is um, is that it's okay to share the, you know, people want to wake people up. It's okay to share that knowledge, but the, the, the main focus should be making sure that we're okay, because we have to, we have to um, get through this. And at the same time, we want to create something better. So for us to be able to get through this and create something better, we need to be primarily focusing on ourselves, taking care of ourselves, self-love, and um, meeting up with people that are also awake and aware is part of that self-love process, rather than trying to challenge everybody that doesn't yet realize what you've realized. Mm, yeah, yeah, I think it's, um, let's talk about planting the seed go you know walk gently in the lives of others that I find a lot of people kind of want to you know just constantly bombard you with information and it's kind of scare scare doom gloom scare and it's in, and we talk about fear and when you're in a state of fear all the time you can't function properly just plant the seeds be gentle about it make people you know maybe you know you, you've planted a seed and someone's sitting there going hang on a minute and they're just kind of it's it's in their own time you you can't keep bombarding people i think a, a lot of the time with kind of just fear you know we know what like, fear has done to us for the last three years coming up so it's just i'm more of the uh, opinion plant the seed walk gently in the in the lives of others you know just kind of just do it that way so, but yeah i think you're right about the old the doom is it doom scrolling <laughs> yeah oh you know the world's gonna end in 10 minutes Ooh, yeah so yeah yeah and also when i'm talking to people it's also empathy so when you're talking to someone else you're you're listening to them actually so you're listening to them listening to, and and trying to uh empathize with their fears their um doubts and those things and then and then as you say pl planting a seed a bit of information a bit of a comment a bit of a thought that might get them to start to think about something slightly differently differently rather than check out all these studies and you know check out this stuff i'm going to send you an email with 12 different attachments <laughs> yeah. you know oh god you just turn off don't you just kind of like it's too it's information overload you know we had a lot of that over the last three years but just as i say just gently sometimes you know gently was it, was it gent saying about slowly slowly catching monkey <laughs> i don't know if you've ever heard that it's just kind of just gently sometimes and just just people not i think people just like that kind of that that you empower people to think for themselves you know i mean i think at the, when it first all started i remember emailing my friend a load of information from Ivor cummins you know the, the irish guy who's you know that's just, you know all these statistics and she wasn't interested at all and i just look back and i think i was trying to bombard her with stuff to try and kind of you know kind of meet me at where i was and she wasn't interested and it's only now i don't know about nearly two years later she's starting to kind of smell a rat and things aren't kind of as as she thought they were but as i say it's just made my my approach there was too harsh you know just you know jane just relaxed and maybe just maybe could have been a bit gentler but I think people come to their realization 
when they do you know you can't force it you know if, if they don't want to and and, and that's that's fine um but then i think this day and age you can't help but think hang on a minute you know there's so much going on in the world you just can't think yeah all's not right it's uh it's actually part of the process that you know that, that initially you you realize this and you're like wow everybody listen to what i've just found out yeah. um and yeah and then and then we realize that 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 doesn't work and then and then also the humbling side of it what i always kind of remind myself and you know sometimes say to others as well is just remembering that whenever we whatever word we want to use woke up um, you know I like became became uh, awake and aware when, whenever that happened to to you to me to us it happened to thousands and millions of people before us mm. and it's going to happen to thousands and millions of people after us mm. so that helps me to remember that everybody doesn't need to be at the stage that I'm at and also still with that humble acceptance that there's still things that I don't know there's mm. still things that you know we're still on a journey where evolution is con is continuous yeah um yeah. so we haven't also got all the answers just mm. because we've learned about you know want this or that mm. yeah spot on yeah yeah jane i'm going to share all the links in the below this video okay but would you like to just share with people where can they uh, what what is the address how can they get to uh, pha how can they get to the pff uh, so it's said uh, www the hyphen pha.org and for the pffa it's www.the-pffa.org yeah great thank you very much jane thank you for speaking with me very welcome and i'll catch you soon <laughs>